Okay, here's an update video on the Blade Inductrix FPV. The, um, the frames are exceptionally weak, and I think I mentioned that in the unboxing. But the, the one problem with these is that these struts are extremely flimsy. And uh, I found that when you bump into things, that's fine. It's not the bumping that's the problem. It's that when you're losing altitude or losing power and you land, it crashes down quite hard on the feet, which essentially are the motors, and that presses up on these struts. And uh, so the frames break. But the frames have been on back order for a long time. So I've, uh, I was finally able to get a hold of a frame. If you're looking for the frame, it's BLH8706. It's the exact same frame for the Inductrix and the Inductrix FPV. The other thing I was looking for was a frame stiffener. I saw on A-Main, A-Main Hobbies, they sell this. This is a McCoon carbon fiber frame stiffener for the Inductrix. And it's this little piece of carbon fiber. It weighs 0 0.7 grams. It's, uh, it's designed specifically for this vehicle. And what that allows you to do is it goes on the underside this frame just slips on here like this and it significantly strengthens the the chassis so if I had a good chassis to begin with if I had bought this before I had broken the frame I think that this stock frame would hold up okay I could go this route where I could uh, replace the stock frame and put the McCoon stiffener on but uh, I've decided to go a different route because my hobby store actually got another uh, hop up way to fix this in stock and that is this this is the Raycon Heli upgrade kit for the Inductrix it uh, it has aluminum uh, ducting as well as you can't see it here in the packaging but it has a carbon fiber frame and this is the newest one this is the oh, there's a QR code if you're interested this one is the latest and greatest this one is the uh, FPV upgrade kit so it comes with an upgraded pigtail, so it's a heavier gauge wire, as well as it comes with some uh, plastic for the camera mounting system. All right, before we get started, uh, any disassembly or any uh, upgrading, I took the carbon fiber brace off, and I just want to get a baseline reading of the, let me take this cap off, because you don't fly with the cap. Camera cap. Okay, let's see how much this weighs stock. 21. I thought it was a bit heavier than that. Oh, that's without a battery. That's right, so the battery's not in it. So we'll take a baseline reading here without battery, 21 grams. Let's uh, take a look at what comes in the Raycon Heli uh, frame. I'll just move some of the tape. Well, there's the camera mount, the battery holder, the new upgraded pigtail. For today's upgrade, I'm not going to solder this on. I'm just gonna leave the stock pigtail on, but I am definitely going to add this later on once I'm getting in the mood for some soldering. Super tiny screws. You are gonna need the jeweler set of screwdrivers to, to do this upgrade. Here's one of the ducks. Nice little landing foot. Actually, that's already a nice design that the foot is made out of the aluminum versus it bouncing on the motor all the time. Some sticky tape, some more O-rings, some more super tiny screws. And here's the carbon fiber frame. This is the main frame itself. So there's no plastic in this except for what holds the camera on. So this is your main frame. You've got your ducts, your little plastic pieces, and here's the instruction kit about how to put it all together. All right. So we will uh, we'll get started soon on this. Here's the main frame. Oh, the little O-rings are to isolate the uh, flight controller on the frame because you don't want to get too many vibrations. And where's the picture of how to put the camera on? There isn't. That's interesting. The one last thing, there was a bit of a surprise under the foam. I'm glad I checked because you can't tell. Anyway, I just lifted up the foam to see what else there was, if anything, and there's actually a generous um, very generous amount of stickers so green blue reddish pink orange yellow white all right i'm going to get started on the uh disassembly of the original frame now I just put down this mat this is a just a rubber mat it's actually an old ibm uh, field kit i used to have from my field tech days from working on laptops small screws you need uh you know super small jeweler size screws to get in in here into the into these holes there's actually this rear one is very deep 
So you have to have a very small uh, size screwdriver. You can't really have an adjustable bit one because it won't fit. It won't fit in the hole. So you almost you really need to have a, an actual jeweler set. These are all just Phillips screws. Just gonna start. There should be just three of them. And uh, if you can magnetize your tip, that helps immensely. And then there is a extra wiring and a connector, so we can pop this off here. Okay. And now this is your camera, your and your video transmitter all in one. And uh, I'll disassemble those parts when I'm when it's time. But this weighs a significant amount by itself. So let's set that aside. I'm going to keep these screws separate. I always like to try and keep a map or, or a container of something, you know, keep your screws with your uh, parts. Try and keep a map of, of what you were taking apart and where. Also, when I'm doing this, I'm going to have to be aware of what motors uh, go in which direction. So here's the front arrow of the PCB. So this is the front so I'm just because these are they rotate different directions so I'll have to just make sure that I keep everything where it is supposed to be. Now I'm going to start by taking the motors out so I've just flipped it uh, 180 degrees laterally so this is still the front I'm keeping the front pointed towards me and uh, the the motors and stuff they just unplug so this is nice the whole upgrade should take no soldering unless you want to upgrade the wire. Be careful of your wiring. Your wiring has to slip up and around through through the holes. Okay. So that's one motor out. So I'm gonna keep this with that prop. So now I have all the motors, all the props off and uh, it's in the correct orientation. So as, so as if the front of the craft is pointed towards me with the cowling part uh, having the uh, left, right, and rear screws that goes directly down into the PCB. The only one that's left is the front one. So I just have to take this one screw out. This should just essentially fall right off. It's just, yeah, it's just friction fit rubber into the little uh, spikes in the frame. And that's it. There, this piece of junk is gone, and the there was other ones that were fractured and cracked too. So this this is going into the recycling bin, and now it's time to put all these good parts into the new frame and start the new assembly. All right, I'm going to start with the motor pod part, and uh, I've looked at the instructions, and you do need to do some disassembly here. So you need to start by removing these three little screws on the motor pod. So I'm going to start there. Okay, now I can pop a motor in. And now I need to carefully... Ooh, there's a cut in this wire. Oh no. Oh good, it's just the it's just the sheathing is a little bit messed up on this one. Yeah, you have to put the head of the connector through. Fish your wire up through. And then slip on over the motor. And it says you would be careful that the wiring doesn't touch the aluminum, which it's not. And now I'll just put these screws back in place. Okay, here we are back again. I now have all four motor pods done. The first one took a little bit of fiddling, but once you get used to it, it's okay. Uh, because you're putting in a super small screw right beside a motor magnet, the, the screw keeps trying to cut fly off your screwdriver and stick to the motor can. So you really have to uh, kind of press with your index finger to hold the screw onto the screwdriver tip while you're trying to get it down into that little uh, hole and line that up. One other thing to note is that um, these are, you have to be specific about how you're lining things up. So you have three spars here. The motor can holder is uh, specific. It only fits in the one direction and your wires should be coming out on the side that does not have a support strut. Um, so set that up correctly on all four. 
Now we're ready to get into the frame design and uh, the, the frame here, I have to put the flight controller onto the frame. And I was looking at the instructions and maybe Raycon has their own style of flight controller, but the flight controller that they show is certainly not a stock Inductrix flight controller. It's not even close. So they're showing that it only uses two screws to hold onto the frame, uh, front and rear. That's not normal. So I was looking at it, you really have, to, the instructions are pretty poor. It doesn't even show any camera stuff on here. You have to figure it out as you go, best on for the equipment that you have and how to best make it work. So I still have the stock uh, rubber boots on the flight controller and the new one comes with these little rubber O-rings which I don't really see a need to use those because the, uh, the important thing is these plastic grommets. So the plastic grommet has to go through a hole on the flight controller. Um, just thread this through here. Pop that down through. Okay. Now you have to figure out how your holes are going to line up. So this is the this is the front according to the schematic. This is the front of the frame, and uh, as far as I can tell, three holes will line up. So your um, your front, you'll have a left and a right, and those should line up just like that. So all right, this whole process has been quite tricky, so you do have to be um, very careful about the rotation and holding all the parts together at once. So because there's nothing that stops this top part from rotating when you're trying to put these self-tapping screws in, you're tapping into, into virgin plastic, um, anyway, things are spinning around and moving around a lot. It's kind of tricky. So I think I still have this one needs to be screwed in, so I just wanted to show you. I've just been kind of holding it as hard as I can with my index finger and just using the pressure. I need to stop this top plastic part from rotating is the difficult part. Well, I have this little uh, um, clamp and it has a, you can lock it in place. So I'm going to be using that as a clamp. I'm gonna hold on to the, I'm gonna hold on to the plastic as hard as I can. And just finish screwing them in. Alright, so I managed to get one pod on. Uh, a couple of little notes about that. So the there's just two screws that hold it on, and the, there's three on the. Um, let me take up the spare pod here. So the, the screws already come installed on it from the factory. So you have to remove the screws along the outside of these three here. These two hold the frame on, and then this one's longer. Just leave this one out until you've got all the pods on because this longer one is to hold on the uh, the battery holder. Okay, here we are. All four motor pods are now installed onto the frame and I was just working on the uh, adding the battery mount here. There's lineups. There's holes that go through to the uh, ducts and you put the long screws through like that. So battery mounts are now installed and I've also just, uh, this is just friction fit on here. This is where you can underhang your FPV. That's where you can underhang your FPV camera. So I'm going to look into how to get that mounted up next. But first of all, I wanted to show you that that McCoon design carbon fiber brace that I showed at the start of the video, it works on this Raycon frame. So it's, um, I was just testing it. So it pops on over the motor pods. It still fits over the aluminum. And um, so this is it here. Now it's uh, it's kind of gets in the way of the battery, but I think it'll work. It actually would add a bit more friction to the battery. So that is a nice little carbon extra double carbon stiffening. So we'll see. I might I might keep that. Might run that on this. Now I need to take the camera gear out of this. So there are three screws on the video transmitter PCB. So I'll be removing those and taking the parts out of this and seeing how to best fit them on here. Okay, for the undermount camera setup to use this mount that comes with it, you do have to remove the camera lens. So it's glued by the factory in a focus position, so you are going to have to break that. So just rotate this until it snaps off, and then there's the, uh, there's the camera sensor inside. Pretty neat. And uh, here's your lens and focal system. And pop it over. I'll screw this back on. All right, I'll have to play with the focus later, but that's how you get your mounting system set up. And this is the video transmitter itself. 
Now I have to figure out how to mount. Okay. All right, and that's how you get your undermount camera. So now I got to put one screw in the middle and button everything down, and we're pretty much done, ready to test. All right, and here we have the Super Inductrix FPV. Going for a more stylish design, chrome blue and white, and I've got the underslung camera all done. Cool, eh? Was I had an old original Inductrix, and I took the Lexan shell off, and I just took the white props from it, and it does work on this new setup, as long as you put your video transmitter on the bottom. So this is just kind of temporarily uh, lying in here, but it does, well, I'll see if it works in a minute, but um, initial power on test did work. I'm also still using the Macoon Designs Extra Carbon Brace. Now the interesting thing about this is that putting your, where did my battery go? Is that when you put the batteries in, because the camera is on the front, you, you can't push the battery as nearly as far forward as before. Press it further, then you're going to move your camera. Anyway, let me just pop the battery out, and I want to show you the total final weight. The con frame, and with the extra Macoon design carbon fiber chassis, 23 grams. So I gained 2 grams. I'm a little bit disappointed in that. I thought it was going to be end up being the exact same weight as stock. But overall, if it stays together, it's it's worth it. All right, let's give it its first test, powering on the monitor. Powering on the upgraded Inductrix. Cool. All right, it works, but it's wildly out of focus. All right, I now have the camera focused nicely, so it uh, actually has a pretty good focus on it. It's, it's you know, it's a low resolution camera, but you can only do so much. Anyway, let's, uh, let's just give this a shot and see how it flies now. So it needs a bit more power. Anyway, if I charge up the batteries, it'll work out okay. Alright, so here's the just a final follow-up on how this has worked out. I've flown a few batteries with it. Um, I still think I have to improve the wiring. I think I do need to do the improved pigtail because I'll get maybe one minute max out of this setup right now, which is terrible. With the camera mounted on the bottom, the one thing is that you can't see the lights at all. So part of the reason I chose this frame color was I was hoping that it would reflect the lights in a little bit more so I could see them because you run out of battery so quickly when you're flying this around I want at least some sort of blinking notice before it falls out of the sky so right now I can't see the lights at all when you're flying via FPV um, the other thing is that the camera mount itself it seems to be very very loose like it easily rotates around when you're uh, it easily rotates and it doesn't really hold in there all that well so you should probably super glue it in I guess get it into the position that you really like and then super glue it in also when you install the battery since the battery is pressing directly up against the back of the PCB it actually gives you up tilt so there's only one screw holding this in two little pieces of plastic nubs and one screw so the force of the battery pressing on it gives you gives you some pretty decent up tilt I think it looks a heck of a lot nicer than the original. It also should be way stronger than the original, and I've gone kind of above and beyond that by adding this other Macoon Designs carbon plate. So this has a double-decker carbon fiber chassis, aluminum motor pods, aluminum ducting, and, uh, and an undermount camera. And then I use the stock inductric shell. So I really like how it looks. I just need to get it to perform a little bit better. Thanks for sticking through that. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully uh, you learned some things about how what you can do to your inductrix when you break your frame. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, share it around. Thank you.